Father, bless us for a few minutes as we talk and prepare ourselves, hearts and minds, for what you would have us do, for what you ask for us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, I was having this theological discussion with a few friends of mine, and we came upon the conclusion, and I've shared this before, that we've been teaching the Ten Commandments wrong. The commandments, Ten Commandments do not start with, thou shalt not, they start with, I am the Lord your God. We discussed that a few weeks ago, and they also end with a command that you cannot keep unless you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The first nine commandments seem to be pretty simple. You can follow those. Thou shalt not remember, speak to your parents, love your, honor your mother and your father. We, we, we know the commands, but that last one is one that involves a changing of your heart and mind, the one that involves something that only God can do. That last one is almost don't even think about it. And to have a new heart and a new mind that obeys and follows God, you must have a relationship with him where you have accepted him into your heart, or else you can't change. If we could change, we would have done it already, and the sacrifice would not have been needed. But we can't. We need him to change us. And in order to do that, you have to have a relationship with him. And I was thinking about what we're going to do today from the standpoint of relationship, something I've been digging into since January, trying to build this better relationship with my father, trying to learn more, trying to be with him more, hang out with him more, waking up early in the morning more. It was something that I didn't realize was going to be such a fight, but was something that was going to be life-changing for me. It's all I want to do. Let's hang out with dad. Today, we have come for communion. And some of us have done this because it's our responsibility. Some of us have done this out of duty. But I appeal to you today the relational side of the equation. There are so many things we do for others because of relationship. I have a bond with my sister. There are things that I do for my sister that won't, she doesn't even have to ask. But when she does ask, I'll do it without question. And one of you may ask and I'll be like, yeah, I'm busy. My sister can ask me to help her move a refrigerator, a, 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 a washing machine, and a freezer up three flights of steps, and I'll do it without issue. One of you may ask me, and I may have thrown out my back that day. I may have hurt a foot or something, and my knee hurts, something. There are things that I will do for my niece and my nephew because of the relationship that we have that will not even be in question. Things that I'll take care of, things they won't even ask me for and, and will do because of we're in relationship with each other. When you're in a marital relationship, there are things that you do and things that you remember and things that you try to accomplish, like fellas cleaning up your side of the bed or actually putting your clothes in the laundry basket. Those things become things that you try to do because your loved one wants it done. I was talking with my brother Saul, and I said I was mentioning his new gate that he has out front. He said his wife got on it. What, remember that project you said you were going to do? Rebuild me the gate. And next thing you know, she's got a gate up. Beautiful one. Well done, sir. I have to talk to you about coming to my house. But we do these things because of the love we have for someone. And I began to think about how much our God loves us. We were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. That has become so core to my spiritual journey this year. We were chosen by God before the foundation of the world. Before he ever put down the first stone of earth, he said, I want them. He fell in love with the very idea of humanity. Then he chose us to be what? Holy and blameless before his sight through Jesus Christ. That means that before they ever made us, there was a plan that should we fall into sin, that Jesus had already chosen to do exactly what he did, to take off of glory, his glory, to take off his divinity, 
to come and allow himself to become subject of the very thing he created, the very beings he created, the very rules and laws that he created. And he became born as one of us with a purpose to die for us. He was chased as a baby. He only had access to the same things we do. The same power that God, dis- that Jesus displayed here on earth, he got from his father. It's the same access that we had. He had to hide. He bled, he sweat, he cried. He had to be educated. He was cold. He was hungry. He walked. He was homeless. He had friends betray him. He had people turn on him. And yeah, guess what? He fought with church folk. You being mad at church folk is not a reason to not come see Jesus. He did the same thing. And then the Bible says he was arrested for doing good work. He was beaten to within an inch of his life. He was forced to march. His friends left him. He had to bear his own cross. He was nailed to it. His clothes were stripped and he was put on it and he did it without uttering a word in his defense. He took it all on. The weight of the sins that we committed yesterday, the weight of the sins that we committed this very morning, the weight of the sins that we're going to commit tomorrow, he took them all on. And when they tried to take his life from him, he wouldn't allow it. My Bible says he gave up his life for us. He had done no sin. Death had no claim to him. He had to give his life for you and I. And he doesn't ask for much. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. One of those commands says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, denoting that someone will try to make you forget. It's the only one. He says, go and tell others about me, teaching them what I've taught you baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He gives the great commission to everyone. And the last thing he asks of us is to do this in remembrance of me. I've been asked for more by less people. Those who I barely know have asked me for more than what my God is asking me for. He asked me to do this in remembrance of him. Now, I could come today and say, he asked me to do it, so I'm going to do it. I've done things that I've been asked to do because it was the right thing to do, because it was my job to do it, but I didn't want to do it. I remember those days when mom would ask you to clean your room, and you walk in the room, I'm yelling at me about something, I'm going to run away as soon as I clean this room up and get out. I remember doing things with a poor attitude. It happens sometimes still today. But this, this thing that he asked us to do in remembrance of him, I have changed. I get to do this. Because the king of glory, my brother, my friend, my master, my savior, my teacher. When I look back at the history of my life, who was the one person who's been there time and time again? Who was the one person who's seen me through every single situation, every single circumstance, every single tragedy? Who's the one who stood by me through my mess ups and my joys? Who's the one who's guided me and only wanted to prosper me? Who's the one who stood by me when I was in the mud and stood by me to help rinse me off? There's only been one person in my life who's been there through thick and thin. Even when I told him to go away, he said, no, I'm going to be right here. And his name is Jesus Christ. And I get to do this 
in remembrance of the one who's given me everything. Before he died, the Bible says he had a last supper with his disciples. And here he is. He knows what's going to happen to him. He knows what is he's about to have to endure. And here he is at supper with his friends and there's no one to clean the feet. With all that he has going on and I have complained about how much I have going on, but I've never had as much going on as he did. With all that his body was enduring, with all that was going to happen, with all that was going on, he stops and recognizes that his servants have no one to wash the feet. And he grabs a bucket and he grabs some towels and he wraps his tunic and he gets some water and he bends down to wash the feet of his creation. And he doesn't complain. Matter of fact, he tells them, if I don't do this, you'll have no part with me. This has to be done. And I'm the one to do it. And if my Messiah, my King, can humble himself enough to say, I love you so much that I'm willing to wash your feet, so will I. goes to the table and he sits and he sups with his friends and he breaks bread with them and he drinks wine with them and he tells them about what's about to happen and he asks them to do this every time they get together in remembrance of him to proclaim what he is about to do to proclaim what he is about to give to remind themselves and the rest of the world that hope is coming. I will be back for you. Folks, we come to the table today and it is an honor and it is a privilege to stand before him and do the thing he asked him to do. Not because it is our duty, but because of our great love for the one who loved us first. There are things that I do for the ones that I love. And this is one of them. As we get ready to go and do what's called the ordinance of humility. Preparing our hearts and minds for the body and blood that emblems that we are going to take in. Please understand we cannot go into this with an unrepented, unclean heart. This is the time where we check our issues and our egos at the door, when we give our sins and our issues to God and we say, cleanse us, Lord, and make me brand new. I can't go into this beefing with people in the church. Can I say beefing? Does everybody know what beef means? Okay. I can't go into this with issues with people in the church. I can't go into this hating someone else who's in the same sinful boat that I'm in. I can't be mad. Because somebody doesn't know Jesus like I do or somebody is feeling a certain way against me. I have to let the master have it all because he's the only one who can fix it. I got to let it go. Whatever the issue is, whatever the problem is, whatever's bothering you, let it go and let it go now. Because we are about to do something that is for the king. I don't want this for me tainted because I am hung up in my own filth. We do this because of love. We have let many things go. We have let many things slide. We have walked away from many things for love. My God is asking us today to let whatever it is go and focus on you and him for love. We
We're going to go into our rooms and prepare to wash feet. There is not one person who is forced to do this. We don't believe in that. We believe in you and God working it out. We invite everyone to join us in the ordinance of humility. Because it's what Jesus did. And if he can do it, if he did it, so will we. Room one, to my right, is for families. Room two is for the men. Room three is for any couples that are here together. And room six is for women. I'm going to repeat that again. Room one is for families. Room two is for men. Room three is for couples. And room six is for women. The water, am I, am I sitting there right? Okay. It's a little different on the screen. Well, this is what I was handed, so we'll, we'll negate the screen. We'll go with this. Room one for families, room two for men, room three for couples, room six for women. All right? The deacons and deaconess will help you if you get lost. You are invited to go, and let us go into it, humbling ourselves. Pray for each other, pray for yourselves, and let God work on our hearts this morning. Bow your heads with me. Father, there is not one thing in your Bible that's not done out of love. Whether it be Old Testament or New, whether it be the beginning before the beginning or our beginning, you did everything out of love. And you gave your life out of love. And you ask us to do this in remembrance of you, not just because of the duty and the honor of being a follower of Christ, but because of our great love for you. We've come here today because of your love for us and our love for you. Lord, bless us as we walk the path that you asked us to. Bless us as we step a foot into your shoes and do as you asked us to do. Forgive us our sins, Father. Open our hearts. Guard our minds. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to repeat this again. Room one for families. Room two for men. Room three for couples. Room six for women. You are dismissed.